So I wanted to share one tip that I found when using Claude Code and Agentic Coding, and be sure to leave a comment below if there's something else that you think I should experiment with and see how it works on my projects. So I've been trying to make a docs folder, and inside this docs folder, after I add a feature, I will ask Claude to basically summarize the feature and then outline how it works and put it in this MD file. So for example, this application, we have a badge system. Every user can unlock different badges. And I wanted to make sure that that was documented somewhere so that in the future, if I want to extend the functionality of badges, I can basically say, hey, uh, let's just go over here as an example. I can say, I need badges to do X, Y, Z. And then I'll basically just tag that MD file. And then after it's done implementing the feature, instead of like clearing the console or doing a compact, I'll say summarize the changes and put them in the badges.md file. I think this is useful not only for the AI systems, but for developers themselves. Like anyone can load up this project and look at how badges are implemented and how they kind of work and the business assumptions and requirements for how badges kind of work, right? I haven't gone through all the text here and actually like verified that this stuff is good because I basically let Claude generate all this stuff. But I do think that this is useful because it not only allows you to use this for Claude, but other agents as well. Like I'm using cursor over here sometimes. I want to quickly just go to a, a file and then modify some code. Like I do find cursor just better at doing the fine grain updates. But overall, if you want to have like a generic change or a feature addition, Claude works pretty well. Now, let me give you a real life example of how this is useful, right? So I have an MD file that explains how do loading states work in this application. And it tells you that, hey, when the page loads, try to show as much heading and paragraph tags as possible. All the static content should be displayed. But anything dynamic, I want to add a skeleton loader. Okay, and it kind of walks you through how this should all work. It tells AI to use Shad CN skeleton loader components. It has a good example of how you can use these skeleton loaders and some other stuff that I didn't write. AI basically summarized this for me as well, right? So let's try this out. I'm going to clear out a console and then I want to show you a page. If I were to refresh, for example, this profile page, notice how it just shows like a loading. It's, it's really bad. It just looks awful. And I would like it to have a better skeleton loader. So I'm going to go ahead and find this page. So if I go to like profile and then go to the actual user ID. I'm going to drag this in and I'll say refactor the loading skeletons in this project. And then I'm going to tag loading state MD. And then if you want, you could say think hard. Maybe you want it to be a one shot prompt that does the refactoring well. Usually adding think hard or think harder or think hardest or ultra think will give you better results. Sometimes it's not necessary, um, but it may actually go and look at other files in my code base the more you allow it to think, and it will just give you some better results. But in this scenario, I don't think Think Harder is even necessary. I just want to kind of demo that because that is a feature that's built in the cloud, which I think you should know about. Now, another thing I found when using AI is that you start getting a good feeling for when AI can probably do it much faster than I could myself. For adding skeleton loaders, it's a very tedious process. You basically have to look at every component you have on the page and you have to create a skeleton loader that has the same size of that component. And then inside that component, you have to basically have all the different subcomponents, like images or text or paragraph tags. You have to make skeleton loaders for those as well. So that when it loads, it doesn't have a bunch of content shifting. It doesn't look terrible. And I have found just letting AI generate skeleton loaders, it's going to shave off like so much time off your dev process. Unless there's a better way to do skeleton loaders that maybe I'm not aware of. Maybe there's like a nice component you can use that automatically figures out the width and the height of all your actual components and create skeleton loaders for it. But yeah, this tip, definitely try it out because I think skeleton loaders just look better than just having like a page spinner. Yeah, so it's still cooking. It's been almost 360 seconds. One thing I will say is that using Think Hard was probably a mistake because now it's actually traversing all my code and trying to update every single page where I wasn't doing the skeleton loaders the way I documented here. Maybe that's a good thing, right? Eventually I need to go through and fix all the skeleton loaders, but that wasn't really what I wanted to do in this video. I just wanted to update that one file, but it's fine. I'll just go ahead and edit the video and show you the results of how many pages is changing. All right, it looks like I might be done. Let's just refresh. And this is what it looks like with now the skeleton loaders. Remember before it was just a giant page loader and now it actually looks 
pretty good with the skeleton loaders. I think it also modifies some other pages too. So like if I go to the mentors or mentees page, go here, this page needs to be fixed. But I think if I click on, um, oh yeah, so I added a skeleton loader. That looks pretty good. Although I don't know if this page is even used anymore. It looks like it also did a request. So if I go to my requests and view, for example, the details here and refresh, I think it also did this page, which is a pretty good loading indicator. Uh, I don't know why it has a button up here that should probably not be there because that's an admin only button. So I'm happy with these changes. It made the app state loaders better. And again, this technique is pretty good. Um, sometimes when you're trying to ask AI to add stuff, like you don't want to overwhelm it with doing too much. But you could try, like when you add a new feature or a new page, you could just go ahead and, you know, drag this in and mark it as context for this new feature so that it automatically brings in the skeleton loaders from the get-go and then you don't have to come back later and like fix it. And I'll do this approach with like, for example, if I'm making a new page that has a form, I have a forms MD that documents that I'm going to use React hook form. I'm going to use client-side validation. I don't want buttons ever be disabled in my application. Instead, show a toast if something is wrong with the form. And I will basically drag in the forms MD, loading state MD. If I'm making a form that's dealing with uploading a file, I'll also grab the storage MD. Now, the reason you do these is because if you don't add this type of context when you're generating new pages, AI will only do what you tell it to do. So if you say, generate me a new page that allows a user to upload a profile picture and a name, it may not do client-side validation. It may not even know how to properly use the way you're uploading files in your system. Like right now I'm using Cloudflare R2 for file uploads and I have like helper functions for doing all that. And I have a progress indicator for when those are those files are being uploaded. And there's a high chance that the AI is not going to understand to add all that unless you explicitly add it as context. If you get lucky, it'll find files that already kind of do this. Um, and you can like tag those existing forms as context and say, hey, please use this whatever page as a reference when building out this new page for the style of the code. Um, but just having these MD files works pretty well. I just want to share with you all, I thought that was pretty cool. And it does help me make better code when I'm using agentic coding. All right, have a good day. And happy coding.